as we go through this, on this path of awakening, remember, for the purpose of this, in looking at this mystical stream, what Ra wants us to take you on is the key to the mystic of all of us, in all of us because that's what it is through genetic continuity. It shows the mystic in all of us. And he thinks that this is the best way that this information is used through genetic continuity. You get the underlying insight into the thematic at the personality level. You can obviously do the design level. You can see it didn't take me that long to give a demonstration. Obviously, when you're doing this analysis work as a session, people are probably going to have stories or want to share experiences with you when something you say triggers something in them that truly lands. Sometimes they get all excited and they really want to share the story. I let them, right? Because it's part of the nature of what it is to be a live analysis analyst, give, uh, analyst giver, analysis giver. There we go. <laughs> and when we look at this example here, the one three, the one four, we're going to look through this. If you want, at the end, if there's no questions, we can come back and play with Ra's story. I'm just leaving that there as an example, not going through it. Because universalization, being practical, and I want to make sure you have enough time at the end to have questions if it's right for you. Because next week, we're going to take a break before we go into um, the options were either stars or death. And we had a request, a couple of them for death. <laughs> so we're going to start with death. And it's actually, you know, death, dying bardo. It's actually quite um, perfect because the dead of winter, you know, the mystical death, you know, the transformation when we go through Christmas, gate 10, self-love, mastery of glamour. Okay. So let's continue then. <laughs> what we're looking at here as an example, if you've got a one, three or a one, four, so we're looking at the personality. To make it very simple and easy, we're looking at what's in common is the first line process and personality, which I already um, gave you an example of in the beginning of class. Just by reading this part and going through it, you would obviously keynote weave like I did. If you go back to what I said when I was talking about the three in my personal example, you see Lavina's asking you to express your own creative way of keynote weaving because that's the work of an analyst so when we look at this beautiful movement remember we have approach the pressure to see the interrelatedness of all things which brings us to wonder or not it's always something to recognize that everything about being a binary is that there is an off on switch remember the pulse yeah, the pulse of off and on, there and gone, here and now, or not. When there is a lack of correctness along this path, then there's going to be frustration, anger, bitterness, disappointment, accordingly with the person's type. And any one of these levels can break down. Do keep in, that in mind. When the person is not operating in alignment, you're going to give them additional keys. Okay, so in my example earlier, I, I very much simplified it for time's sake, but I could have added a lot more of the or not and talked about the bitterness, yeah, or the resentment since this is an energy projected type. Do keep in mind the breakdown that can happen as you tell the story, particularly if you hear something in their voice when they tell the story of their experience call them back. Oh, there's Lavina's body talking. Um, explain, inform, share with them your recognition or whatever it is, that your intention. You want them to know about what you recognize or what you see or what you can help them self-realize as they're walking that path. Because remember, I simplified it by saying, hey, there's going to be twists and turns here. <laughs> it's up and down. Yeah. At its root, at its core, it's emotional and the being was emotional. So keep in mind that the keynoting can be very, very, very basic. And we're going to do that so that you get the sense of it. The pressure to wonder is going to alter the form through principles. 
This is the beginning of your mystical spiritual process if you're a first line being. So where you begin with the root of your mysticism is this pressure to wonder that ultimately is going to alter your form through principles, tribal principles. Given the one and your um, tendency to investigate because you're insecure, you're going to have to find those principles that work for you, that are successful, satisfying, peaceful, surprising, whatever it happens to be for that being. And then there's the bridge. So what, after the sensitivity, remember this is the only tribal spiritual channel, this one is simply a bridge. The bridge represents what you're going to be tied to, whether you're going to be tied down to your roots, or whether you're going to be able to spread your wings and fly. Because that's what it's really about to awaken to yourself, rather than being tied down. Think about tribal language here, tied down, you know, staying down here, where there is this movement. And remember, what can happen is we get knocked back down, this movement, and we get knocked back down. So in the beginning, the process for the first line is that you're going to behave according to the tradition of the elders or not until you start to struggle with the rules of the elders or not. And when we look at behaving according to the tradition until one begins to struggle with the rules, this is what happens with the first line being within the context of the bridge on the path of the mystical way to awakening. So what is happening here? What's at work within the love of work and wanting to have appreciation and family? Well, if you behave according to the tradition until you begin to struggle with the rules, this is inherent, obviously, within all first-line beings. They're going to behave according to what their elders say until they begin to struggle with the rules. This is what is natural for them, totally normal. They're struggling with the rules of their parents. So time to leave the nest and fly. And that might be a shock, you know? Ross says that so many of these ones are stripped down, humiliated, denied the moment that they engage or begin to struggle with the rules. This is not an easy bridge to cross for them, but it's there in every first line being to go ahead and do that understanding that that is their process, that it's there in every first line being, to get to the point where no rule has a right to hold them down. And this is the only thing that will ultimately bring to the empowerment, bring them to the empowerment, is to get to the point of being uncontrived because they are empowered by the challenge, being modest on that path to fulfill their potential this mundane path to awakening. And that is the process that they go through consciously. So their mystical transformation is empowered by the challenge to be uncontrived and modest on the mundane path. It's another way you could language it. Remember the beauty of keynotes, keynote weaving. So long as you've got their keynotes, it should be something that they can resonate to. Yeah, they may not identify with it quite yet. What if they haven't, you know, with they're quite young or they haven't had that opportunity to leap out of the tribe and into the higher self, the realm of, of existence, contemplation of the now, pure beingness. So you tell them their story, their story, however it is correct for you to give them your view. Because remember, they're here for you just as much as you are here for them when you are working, doing this work with your clients. And everybody has their own fractal. They need to hear it from you. Don't compare yourself. Don't doubt. Saturn up there in the gate of doubt. Don't judge yourself. You do your best and you give them their story. So when it's right for you, you won't be nervous about this. Yeah. Or you'll find you have a response to it or whatever it happens to be for you. When we alter the form through principles leading us to the mundane path, we can see a glimmer of this being's inner reality. That mundane path is built on being empowered by the challenge. Maybe not. 
but empowered by the challenge in order to be uncontrived, this challenge to be modest and live correctly, authentically, as an authority, your own authority on the mundane plane. That's the movement. Okay? Their movement. Everything in movement. Everything vibrating. Now, if we move to the second line, you will find we have the pressure again too. But now receive the call or not, and so forth and so on, as I keynote wove this earlier today. So the second line with this pressure to receive the call alters the form through planning. That is the adrenalized foundation for a two. The call, receiving the call, and this pressure to receive the call alters the form through their mental planning. Remember, this is their consciousness. Now, if there is no mutation to this, these are the beings who will pray every night without any expectation of receiving an answer. But they have a pressure. They have this phase to go through. They have their own ritual to go through. Everyone has to cross the bridge. And how is it that the two is going to cross? They're going to follow the tradition of the elders, struggle with the social demands, or not. So they begin with following the tradition of the elders until they struggle with the social demands. And that tells you something about every second line being is that they're going to struggle with the social demands of the elders. It's not just about their parents, although that's the primary, right? If we can expand that out, remember what this is about, community. So it's not just family. It could be your um, extended family. It could be your teachers, your priests, the social, moral rules, regulations at work, whatever it happens to be. All the things, if we think about it contextually, what the community is about and this cross of planning, this is where we built, you know, structures, so churches, schools, in order for the indoctrination to happen, governments, big governments. So anything that we are led to have to demand because these are what they are receptive to as a two. And so until there is a struggle with the social demands, remember, it's the or not until they find that struggle with the social demands. And until that happens, the struggle cannot simply just be struggle. This has to be that they cross that bridge and in genetic continuity, every two, every second line being, this is what the personality must go through, struggle with the social demands because of the following the tradition of the elders until they get to that place where they need to cross that bridge. Now, think about what the gate 40 is. Denial, right? Deliverance deliverance, or what if the people who lord it over you, the people above you deny and say, nope, back down with you. So there is a struggle here. And what are the twos, if not, remember, two five, we're looking at somebody whose nature is innocent, because it's a harmonic profile. Two four, both of them with personalities that are shy, needing to do the thing that comes easy. If it's not easy, the four abdicates. Yeah, this innocent motivation, oof. So it can be hard for the twos until they find their way forward to struggle with the social demands and break through. How are they going to break through? Shock, initiation. So this personality, if they are going to be awakened, they are going to have to struggle with the social demands so that they can withdraw from disorder in order to be in the now and depend independent on their narrow path. This is their way, their mystical way to awakening. That pressure to receive the call leads to a narrow path. Okay, pressure to receive the call leads to a selective picky path, a narrow path. Remember twos being barrier masters? Yes, so selective, so picky. All right. Then we have the 51, which leads us to withdraw from the disorder or not. Then we go to being independent. 
This withdrawing from the disorder leads to the existential perfection of the independence of being on the narrow path. It's there for every single two inherent in their life movement. This is not something that is rigid. These are the vibrating themes that are there in the genetic continuity, in the genes themselves. Remember, everyone has everything. So your personality resonates to all two-ness there in that aspect of your differentiation the genes are there resonating to that vibration inside of you consciously or unconsciously physically whatever that happens to be so this means remember this structure when you are born okay it doesn't change but we all evolve we all walk a path so the whole phenomenon, the whole process is right there, literally, when you are born, waiting to be unpacked, however it is correct, and whenever it is correct for you to go on that road, that path to awakening. And here we have, again, the third line process, our martyr minds, 3536. When we look at this pressure to attune, altering the form through rejection, no, it's not this, not that. Neti neti, you know, the Zen expression. The pressure to attune. And so deep within the third line, personality being, deep, deep, deep within them is the way of getting rid of anything that's not mystical, not spiritual, by altering the form through rejection. Now, if we think about what a three does, it'll try new things. Aren't they a bit open? Yeah. They have this potential to experiment, to adopt, to learn through trial and error. So you oftentimes see these beings, if they weren't born into a particular religion, or maybe they were, but rejecting and then going on their own seeking, searching in order to find and align to their higher principle, their higher nature. On the path, that process, as far as crossing the bridge, it begins with respect. There's no deeper shattering on the bridge through that fear of tradition than when the third line being has that respect lost either for themselves. Oh, there's nobody worse than a three to be self-flagellating. Or when the other people lose they've lost other people's respect because of all the mistake making yeah and then we have that struggle with the attention of the elders or not so the movement from the respect of the tradition of the elders and then struggling with the attention of the elders that those elders deserve respect that we who are three can be seen and we are deserving to be recognized for what we are, but consciously, we are seen as potentially troublemakers. Unconsciously, you see the bodies, of course, very different. Same thing happening here with all of them. Remember the innocence of the harmonic profiles. There's no deeper need to discover, buried deeper within the psyche of every third line personality than the call, this animal that shouts out that it exists, this demand for attention, the demand for divinity, the demand for spirituality. Discover, shouts the three, in this path to awakening. What does not work? Well, what does not work? Oh, those elders, hypocrites, the lot of them. <laughs> My mind is saying that because I'm designed to see the hypocrisy. Okay relative to the personality construct. Okay, so it leads to the ability to adapt to the shock, to be able to fail, and then thus to be just on this path of self-consciousness or of the inner knowingness of one's awareness as one centers within on one's higher principles. Now we just play with the keynotes their inner awareness lighting up inside. You can point your fingers with words at their truth, but it's up to them to walk their path. Yeah. So we see this pressure to attune leads us to self-consciousness. It leads us to self-awareness. The pressure to attune puts us on the path of self-consciousness. 
Of course, there's always this or not. Nope, not. Failed mutation, as in not going on that path of awakening. Now, that's not in, in, interesting. I'm going up to money. Thanks very much. Until something knocks you back and it goes, nope, path to awakening, if it indeed, indeed is your path. Yeah. Your desire, your destiny, your trans personal purpose, or whatever it happens to be. Ross says that there's nothing more profound than the ability to be just. It's just an extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary gift of the third line being. That word always delights me because I, I love seeing words that can be this or that, extra, ordinary, or extraordinary, you know, to be just. What a beautiful gift. Yeah. With this lower trigram business, we can see that there is that personal destiny, right? One, two, and three lead us to personalities that are designed to be self-absorbed, to be modest as a first line is self-absorbed, to be independent as a second line is self-absorbed, to be just somewhere for the three, there is an other, right? Because it's just, whoops, that happened. Okay, what did we learn? And that's the beginning of the doorway, opening us up to the transpersonal process. Just like you know, all threes, oops, I didn't know that was there. Oops, banged into you there. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, let's be just, okay? That's the, mm, my mind wants to say correct way, aligned way, better way to say it, to be just. You know, mistakes happen, in other words. Now, we come to the fourth, fifth, and sixth line here, which is upper trigram. And now we're talking about different qualities. They're transpersonal. Every upper trigram line has a viability to be rooted in its capacity to integrate with others and to know how to be in the other person's world as a friend or a lover, as a mentor, as a guide, as an example, whatever it happens to be. So every upper trigram line, no matter where it sits in whatever gate it is, pays more attention to what it's not than what it actually is. So it's not just the six that does this. Four, five, and six, all reaching to the other side of their channel process. Okay. When the upper trigram, we take on our dualistic construct of, you know, I is an other, as an example, we recognize the other wherever we have four, five, and six lines, because ultimately we are genetically attracted to bond with what is different, attracted to those who are different in order to reproduce with the other. We're not just talking about babies here, truly, or family. We're talking about the relativistic communion, communication, creativity, to connect, to bond, to be what we came here to be, especially when you see people who are transpersonal. Their role has to do with who they are for others, kind of like a projector. Yeah, you see a transpersonal, 51526263, particularly because those are transpersonal um, karmic processes. You're looking at, as an example, just to, to extremify it out, I'm using the projector as an example because they are here to be who they are for others in order for success to happen. So when you're looking at the mysticism that is rooted here in our upper trigram, it's not necessarily about the personal process obviously, because the mind and its process, it's always connected in some way or another with the other, yeah, reaching out to the network to be patient. Being practical, as in the heresy, practicality of being direct for the five. Six line to role model as an example that is there behavior. See, we have been looking at the behavior of those line qualities. So just to keep that in mind. Now, going back through the profiles, 4-1, we know that's juxtaposition, fixed fate. So we know that they're going to be innocent 
in nature, teachers, all harmonics being teachers at the body level. If you don't know that, and you are curious about what I mean by that, do uh, ask me at the break. It's from prof profile purpose and function or your advanced mechanics. For six, we know that the four is a line of influence and the six go through, goes through a tripartite life process. So it's taking some time yeah, for its fullest maturity after its time of vulnerability in order for it to shine. Learning through the trial and error business. Okay, so fourth line consciousness. Here, their pressure to influence alters the form through persuasion. You can see immediately this is about the other persuasive. Oh, well, there has to be another in order to persuade that adrenalized pressure to alter the form through persuasion, to convince, to influence. Hey, you need this or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Relative to the tribal principles. This lower here, remember, besides um, the fact that we have higher principles and lower principles, remember this is about the need for family, safety, security, you know, food, shelter, all of the education, all of those things that are about being raised in a family construct. Yet, like all forms, everybody's got to cross a bridge in their lifetime at some point. Okay, so we have the family and its fear of tradition, influence of maintaining the tribal tradition or not. 40, deliverance, the path of denial, liberation from the influence of the tribe or not. So how might we language it? They have to go from influencing the maintaining of the tribal tradition to liberation from the influence of the tribe. That's quite a step for them. One of those things that are always interesting to Ra was that the fourth line being, for them, when they break out, they never really go far away. What he means by that is that rather than looking at breaking with the faith, they're going to create their own sect that is loosely related to it. <laughs> As an example, I'm pretty sure, if I'm remembering correctly, Richard Rudd, one of, uh, according to Ra, his most intelligent students, being a 4 six creating his own, you know, quote unquote system based on human design, the gene keys. So rather than breaking with the faith completely, he created his own sect, got rid of type strategy and authority and just did the art of contemplation. Yeah. So rather than totally dropping the belief system or whatever it happens to be for the fourth line being, they will retain certain aspects of it. Ah, but what does a four do? It's going to censor, doesn't it? 26, four, it will censor. So while one might have censored certain aspects of the system, another one will censor other aspects of the system. Liberation from the influence of the tribe. When they cross that bridge and go into the shock to be drained by the challenge, that is something because giving of oneself, sacrificing oneself is one of the ways you can make saints of people who sacrifice themselves for others, don't you? In order for a fourth line being to truly transcend all of that, the mutation, remember this is mutation up here, individuality. So we see the mutation begins with their readiness to sacrifice themselves for the other, to be drained by the challenge. It's quite something to think about because, you know, this fourth line theme carries the themes of burnout and exhaustion, and those are mundane qualities of the body, but this is not the mundane way for them to be drained by the challenge, to accept the need for sacrifice, is to be able to survive it. Can I survive this? And to be patient. Remember, they have to be patient, especially if they're emotional patience. Because remember, fourth lines are opportunists. They have to invest their energies into their network, those who are going to pay dividends back to them, because they cannot achieve anything great without their network. To be patient, according to Ra, is the glory of creation. And that's what it's really all about. We're all in a waiting game. Everything is a waiting game. When you're not in charge, when you have no choice, when you're in the program, you just wait. 
for right timing, you wait and you watch because to be able to be ready to sacrifice is to bring survival, not just survival for you as a four, but survival for the other. Remember, this is fixed fate. Yeah. So survival for the other. These are upper trigram. And this is the beauty that there is a gift that patience brings. Patience is its own reward. Patience is a virtue. Patience brings things to you without the struggle, fight, force, or push. The pressure to influence leads us to their way of cooperation. And that's the six or 20th gate. Yeah, the way of cooperation, the existential manifestation of the way. Now, when we move up to the fifth line beings, 5152, now we see universalizers and you get the call to the call itself, the pressure to call, the pressure to call. This pressure to call alters the form through practicality and practicality is the obvious, according to Ra, who was a 5-1 that nobody sees until you tell them because you're putting out the call, right? Practicality. How come nobody sees the way that I see? Most people who don't know that everybody sees things differently, right? Practicality. The five has a higher perspective or view, you know? Particularly, look, study. Yeah, these people who are first lines, waiting, waiting while they master, while they study. Or again, remember these second lines, they're underneath, they're teachers. So they're the ones who are really here to master the innocence of leading fifth lines through practicality, rescuer, savior, saint, all of those wonderful things that we think of as the five, the general. This process that they go through, this bridge that they have to cross, is that they have to move from devotion to tribal tradition in order to find the liberation from the demands, the tribal demands. And there's nothing more difficult for the five than to deal with a projection field upon them. And that projection field is enormous. Ra would say the hopes and dreams rest on the shoulders of the fives, okay, and the fives, because that projection field brings demands even when nobody articulates the demands. They just expect great things from the fives. And only when a five can be liberated from the demands of the tribe, now it can live out its heretical potential. But the moment that you back away from the, the tribe, they can get very annoyed. As an example, let's say you've got somebody in their 40s. Yeah, they're ready for the children to move out. <laughs> I'm done being a father. I didn't ask for this. You know, getting out of the tribe's uh, influence. Like, no, liberation from the demands of family. I want to be free. If we think about what this stream is, no, see, it is manifested, isn't it? Manifested. Freedom of action freedom of action, whenever you see manifested in someone's design. So the stream itself is a manifested stream, manifested stream. I'm just um, anthropomorphizing the stream itself as if it was a being, you know, so you can get a freedom of action view on that. Now, in order for them to be liberated from moving from tri devotion to tribal tradition and liberated from the demands of the tribe, they, as fives, have to consciously embrace disorder, be able to celebrate in the embrace of the disorder, to be direct, and this is the way of the form. Their personality, consciousness, finding their own way to freedom of action. And if you're a five one like Ra was, or if you're a five two, this theme of the personality, that pressure to call to the way of the form is the way. You hear that from Ra. This is what I do. I'm a messenger of the form, he would say. I'm calling you to your own truth, yeah, the awakening. This is what he did, the pressure to call to the way of the form. The way that my husband says this is um, quite early in our experiment. Instead of getting all geeky on all of the, you know, little details of human design, he would just say, follow the body. 
follow the body right there. The pressure to call to the way of the form, follow the body. And he's a five one. Okay. Now we move to the six line. And the six line process is the pressure to separate. Remember, separate. And that alters the form through sensitivity. When we understand, comprehend, grasp that the six line is all about their role, ultimately as a role model of themselves, then when they are separate, they are at their most sensitive. This is something that's so interesting about them. Separation and sensitivity are one and the same thing. So even if you don't have this tribal stream of sensitivity in your natal design, when the 6-2 and the 6-3 get to their um, highest expression of selfhood at 50 and beyond, remember that's their tripartite life process, right? When you get there as a 6-2 or a 6-3, that separation alters their form, they're going to be more sensitive, okay? They're just going to be more sensitive. Something to recognize about our precious 6-2s and 6-3s, particularly 6-3, you know that they're innocent in nature, right? Innocence in nature, so much more sensitive. Everything under the sun, okay to be. Now, as the call and the practicality, so receiving the call and the practicality, that pressure to call, they're one and the same thing. As influence and persuasion, hmm, persuasion, and where's influence? Influence and persuasion, there we go. Call and practicality are one and the same thing. That's where I need to be. Got to re redo that little um, section, sorry. Okay, so as the pressure to call and practicality are one and the same thing, five business, as influence, 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 there we go, <laughs> or not, and persuasion are one and the same thing, fourth line business, then they are the whole that is greater than the sum of the parts in this combination, because we're looking at the adrenalized pressure and the emotional wave. So it's a way of keynote weaving the line qualities within the construct of this um, sensitivity. Okay. The adrenalized pressure and the emotional wave synthesis, the design of being sensitive. So the pressure to separate and sensitivity being one and the same thing on the emotional stream to awakening. But when we see the six line quality, now we see the bridge being about the value of tribal tradition, then liberation from the elders of the tribe. Okay. Their bridge process is to be liberated. In other words, they can see the benefit of nurturing the tribe, but they're not here to be a, a child forever. None of us are. But particularly at their 50-year process, remember 49 or 50, that's when these beings come to full maturity. Not overnight, obviously. But it is their process to grow into those great big archetypal roles, those great big shoes. And liberating from the elders leads to their ability to separate from the shock. We see separate again, separate from the shock in order to be initiated into the mysteries. Ra says, oh, how I wish every six line being who is in their Kiron phase could be correct so that they can separate from the shock. That's what it takes for them to be correct, separate from the shock to be inappropriate. Here, this is the thing he loved most about the six line beings. They're not well understood because they often seem odd, but they're supposed to be inappropriate. The best ones are inappropriate. To say the wrong thing at the wrong time, they sound funny, whatever the case may be, they interject at the wrong time, they're simply deeply, deeply inappropriate about them because they're them, they are themselves, so they're different. Remember, to be a role model of yourself is what the sixth line is here to do. They're here to be examples. And so the inappropriateness is the example to find their way of wisdom, to be wise. Fool on the hill, he would say. 
yeah, with the six line beings. So they have this pressure to separate that leads them to the way of wisdom. This is their way. This is their way. Pressure to separate leading to the way. So we've just gone through all of the personality views as far as every single of the 12 profiles from hopefully a thorough way, your capability of understanding how this works. When we come back, because I can see I'm over time a bit, we're going to continue to finish off the slides, not too much more, and then we'll uh, hold discussion for the rest of class. So enjoy your break. See the adrenalized, emotionalized pressure through our bridge on this initiation path to awakening. And Ra wants you to think about something. When you're looking at this dynamic, we all have this at the bottom. This is the magic of what it is to be that 1949, the drama of our cycle and the closing of this, that change that's coming in 2027, the mutation that's coming, because there will no longer be this dynamic, that adrenalized, emotionalized pressure. It won't be there anymore, literally. But as long as it is there, it isn't something that in and of itself mutates. It doesn't. It doesn't carry the mutative of the individuality that that 51, 25, 10, and 20 bring. This creates the foundation upon which if one gets access to the bridge, one can meet the other side and go through the mutation of initiation and awakening. So the bridge that we all have to cross, not a mystical channel technically per se, but part of the path of this mystical way to awakening. Now, isn't that nice? <laughs> it's nice. Or not. Might not be. Remember, there always is the or not. There always are failed mutations. There's going to be struggle on this path to awakening. All individuality is, yeah, has this capability of finding and struggle. And we see the struggle beginning quite clearly here on the bridge. So whenever you look at all of these bridges, every bridge begins with acceptance that leads to liberation. Liberation doesn't mean other than in a very specific place's rejection. It simply means what it is saying, liberation. He loved this gate deliverance. He had it himself. He says it's an extraordinary translation of the Chinese original, to be delivered. It's not about rejecting the tribe, denying the tribe, hating the tribe. It's not what that is about. It's about being liberated from the homogenized genetic pool, liberated from it, deliverance, to be delivered from. So not because it's bad, but because it is not you. And you can see that in this bridge because this is the mystical spiritual bridge to awakening the great challenge of what it is to live as yourself from the higher self in order to simply be awake. Self-love, to appreciate all that is, everything deserving of love simply because it is, because it be, yeah, a part of the great totality of existence, each of us. So when we look at shamans, shamans who are the ones who work with drugs, most of them did, the traditional shaman, you know, back in the day, Ra says that they knew the joke, what gave them power is that they knew the patterns because patterns are eternal. They don't change. They're always there. There's a pattern that allows you to go through this door. There's a pattern that allows you to return. There are stages in this process and they're all known, all of them. It is the same with the genetic predisposition in any human being to fulfill their mystical and spiritual potential. It's all there. Here's your formula. All that's lacking is correctness. That's all. So remember when we speak of the genetic continuity of these themes, to understand, yes, these are generics. This is a keynoting generic. There is the sublime of the uniqueness of your design and all of the things that go with that and all of the levels that are involved. But it's part of us. 
for us, these ways are the last opportunities to live them because they're going to fade because of the shift, the change, the morphing of and transformation of the body graph. Again, when he says us, we're talking about the collective humanity. It'll take about a hundred years for everyone carrying that theme to die out and the full mutative shift happening, you know, over the decades to come as more and more beings are being born with a new structure and less and less of us born with this alive on the planet. And that's how it fades, this mystical path of awakening. Ra says the theme or the thing about the time that we live in, what a window of perhaps the next hundred years or so would bring, is that this is the real opportunity for our kind, homo sapiens and transitists, to fulfill our process on this plane. Not only to be correct within the form and to surrender to the correctness of the form, but to experience transcendent consciousness or that fulfillment of what it is to be us. 